Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakurash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so and never to waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Now the title of this lesson is going to be called uh, "Healing in His Wings." Okay, healing in His Wings, and um, that's one of the, um, you know, one of the main things that we're waiting on. Okay, um, you know, uh, Lord willing, being of the hopeful elect. Okay, uh, you know, more than anything that's promised to us, we need healing, man. Okay, because not only uh, are our people mentally and spiritually sick. Okay, but we're also physically sick. Okay, when you, um, I asked my mom, um, maybe a year or so back, and uh, you know she accepts the fact that she's an Israelite, but you know she's not a, <laughs> she's not a prophetess, so to speak. <laughs> but um, no, she accepts it. But um, I asked her. I said, Mom, who who's the, uh, who are the people that uh, uh that have high blood pressure, diabetes, and you know, other uh, terminal illnesses, okay, that, that plague our people. And I just asked her, I said, who are the, uh, which people lead those categories in the hospital? You know, because she's pretty much been in nursing since the 80s. And um, she said, uh, the Negroes and the Latins, okay? And that wasn't predicated off of me telling her who we are or none of that. Okay, I just asked her a basic question, you know, did, wasn't even dealing with, uh, the truth or who we are. And that was her first response. Okay. That the Negroes and the Latinos, uh, have the highest cases of all those terminal illnesses, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, and things of that nature. Okay. So like I was saying, you know, not only are we extremely spiritually and mentally sick. Okay. But also we're physically sick. So one of the main things that we need as a people Okay, it's for our Lord to return with healing in his wings, man, as the scriptures say. Okay. And um, I've grown to adopt that mindset, you know, uh, moving forward, you know, Lord willing, um, we're of the elect. Okay, one of the main things I want to do is 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 if if the Lord sees fit for me to do so is to heal brothers, man. You know, speaking of myself, man, I'm I, I got infirmities up the ass, man. And um, you know. It sucks, okay? Just as myself, but there are other brothers. There are a lot of brothers in this ministry, okay, that are sick. Certain brothers that are that, that are terminally ill that I've heard of, okay? Brothers who can't even go out to the highways and hedges, you see? You know, uh, uh, brothers who have uh, uh, leprosy, okay? So, yeah, one of the main things we need as a people is to be healed. Okay? And that healing is going to come in the form of mental and spiritual healing and also physical healing. Okay. So um, through the spirit, just jump into these precepts and let it do what it do. This is, uh, I think we'll start off at, uh, yeah, let's start off with Isaiah, the first chapter. Okay. Uh, We started to, this is Isaiah 1 and 2, and it reads, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh have spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Verse 2, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Okay, and the Most High is uh, using a reference of two very stubborn, dumbfounded animals, okay? Now, the ass is great at what he does, okay? And the ox is exceptionally great at what he does, okay? But as far as um, being stubborn, okay? They're some of the top two most stubborn, dumbfounded animals, okay? But the Lord said what? Even they know their, their owner and their master's crib, but Israel does not know. They don't even consider. 
Meaning our people don't even consider the fact that, hey, first and foremost, why are we the ones catching the most hell? Okay, because every Israelite, okay, whether they know or not, can confess that. Yeah, we're always the ones shot down with no weapons, this, that, and the third. Okay? And they don't even consider their answers to that. And the reason why they don't consider is because they don't read. Like the scriptures say, blessed is he that readeth. Okay? Because to know where you're going, you got to know where you came from. You got to know why you're in this predicament. You see? Now, for face value, I'll speak for myself. I didn't, I didn't, uh, 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 you know, know per, per se why the reason where we're in this predicament. But it kept alarming me. Like, why? What the hell is this, man? Okay? And really, when you get into the scriptures and get an understanding, okay, of the doctrine, uh, well, the scriptures say it, it, it said plainly. It says, be ready to give an answer to every man for the hope that is in you. You see? And the reality is, for every question there is that realistic, okay, not did Adam have an Adam's apple and didn't. I mean, uh, or belly button and things of that nature. Things that make sense and things that are questions that are conducive to uh, uh, our existence. Okay. And then ultimately things that are conducive for salvation and being delivered from the times of trouble. You see, but when it comes to the scriptures, we're supposed to be able to give an answer for everything. Okay. So being, uh, have, uh, being uh, in a mind state of saying, well, I don't know. It, it, it is what it is. No, nah, that's not the spirit, man. Okay, there's a reason and a logic behind everything, okay? Especially if it's something that is worth knowing, okay? It has to make sense, you see? And that's what the scriptures is. And that's why they consider the Bible one of the most bought books, but the least understood, okay? Why? Because you got to toil and labor to get to understand it. And more importantly, you have to come up under other men. You have to learn from another man, okay? Like the scriptures say, one of the first oracles of the Most High is that you should be taught again. Okay, keyword taught, and that's what a lot of our people will not do. Okay, they will not listen to another man. You know, teach them. Okay, well, hey, in that case, the Lord will teach you by trial by fire. Okay, but uh, Isaiah uh, 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 one and uh, two again, three again, it says the ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. And that's, that's a damn shame that they're not even considering, man. Okay, now the reality is, like I said, I was in that same predicament. The majority of the brothers in this ministry, if not all, okay, were in that same predicament. Until the Most High saw fit for us to awake and to arise out of that slumber. You see? But there's certain manifestations in your mind. Okay? Because I always ask myself, why is it this way? You know? Now, hey, call Halalium. In other words, all praises be to Yahweh by Hashem Shai for sparking that in my mental. Okay, but there is a manifestation. You see, now if you go on and never consider, or never guess, or never ask why, or want to know why, then you're gonna be led into destruction. You see, but it says, um, verse four, it says, ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Okay, and that's the mindset of the whole nation of Israel. Okay, prior to the mass awakening in the late 60s, okay, via Elder Abba Bivens. Okay, but prior to that, we were all the fuck off. Okay. A sinful nation laden with iniquity, okay? Like a ladle that you did, use to uh, pour gravy on mashed potatoes, okay? That, that's pretty much what has happened to us. We've been laden, like smothered, like, a, like, a, <laughs> like mashed potatoes with wickedness, you see? Say, to the point where we provoke the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. Verse 5, why should ye be stricken anymore? Okay, because the Most High has been punish us, punishing us, plaguing us, uh, uh, you know, battering us, letting the, 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 um, our enemies, which be the heathens, have their way with us. Okay, and all of those things, like the scriptures tell us, 
all the scourges are for amendment. Meaning when you catch hell and you go through captivity and you're beaten down, okay, and ostracized and given proverbs and bywords contrary to your biblical nationality, those things are, mo are supposed to rectify you, okay, or supposed to make you be repentative. So the Lord is asking, verse 5, why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. And the whole head faint. You see? So one of the main things we need and one of the main things that's coming with the salvation for the nation of Israel is healing, man. Okay? And this is during the times of Isaiah. And and, and, and our people were wicked. Hey, the scriptures say, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, let me see if I can find it. If not, I'll just quote it. Um, bear with me. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I found it. Let me see. Okay, yeah, I started 23. Okay, and this is speaking of an instance, but really the nation of Israel as a whole. Okay, uh, verse 24 is going to verify that. Uh, Deuteronomy 9 and 23, it says, Likewise, when Yahweh Shemia Shai sent you from K uh, Kadesh Barnia, saying, go up and possess the land which I have given you. Then ye rebelled against the commandment of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, your power. And ye believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. Verse 24, ye have been rebellious against Yahweh Bashim Yahushai from the day that I knew you. Okay. And that's harsh, man. Okay. And among, uh, amidst hearing that, man, that should spark up a high level of brokenheartedness and contriteness, man. Okay? Because here it is, like we just read. And uh, let's go back. Uh, Isaiah, the, fir uh, the first chapter. Okay? Verse 2. Um, it says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For Yahweh Bashim Shai have spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. Now, what is he speaking about? Brought up children. Okay. And nourished. Well, hey, being led out of uh, Egypt. Okay. Out of captivity. Where we were meant to, uh, forced to serve with rigor. Okay. Under the Pharaoh of Egypt. You see, brought us out of there, brought us into the wilderness, nourished us. Okay. We, f we were fed. Okay. But yet, nonetheless, what did we do? We rebelled. You see? So let's jump back down to uh, verse five again. Uh, Isaiah chapter one, verse five. It says, why should you be stricken anymore? Why should the Lord punish you anymore? Like, what? what how much more is it going to take? You see, it says ye will revolt more and more, which we have. OK, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. OK, now key point, it says the whole head is sick, meaning the whole nation of Israel, <laughs> the head is sick. OK. And uh, the scriptures also say what? Give me any plague but the plague of the mind or the plague of the heart. Okay? And that's what has happened and befell the nation of Israel. We've received the worst plague to the point where we don't even consider who our power We didn't, Salakia. We didn't consider who our power was. Okay? And even to this point, the degenerates, the, the okay? Or, or, uh, the under, undesirables or those who just won't repent of our nation are still not even considering, okay? Even though it's being brought up, it's being mentioned, okay? Brothers out, it, it, just today, you know, today being the Day of Atonement, I'm looking on my YouTube, watching videos, like videos popping up left and right. Now, obviously, they're to feed the, the, the hopefully elect, okay? But ultimately, it's, 
hey, it's accessible to the world. It's on the World Wide Web. And our people will not adhere. They're going to revolt more and more. Okay? Showing the whole head is sick. Okay? But, hey, the water you by Shem Yahweh Shah. Okay? For pouring the spirit out on our elder. Uh, um, on the, like Elder Abba Bivens, Elder Yaquab, and the L our apostle elders on down. Okay? To, to bring us back into the knowledge, man. Into the understanding. So that what? We can be begin the process of healing. Okay? And that's one of the main things that we need as a nation. Okay? So, um, let's get another precept. This is the book of Genesis, uh, the third chapter. And uh, we, I think I started at 14. Okay? And this is the conversation that... Uh, the heavenly father is having with the serpent because of his trespass in the garden. Okay. This is Genesis uh, chapter three. And this is ironic. You know, I, I had this lined up to do, and I was just watching a video with Elder Yashua, and he was going into this, man. It's beautiful, man. The spirit is heavy. This is uh, uh, Salakia, Genesis chapter three, verse 14. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh said unto the serpent, behold, Salakia, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Okay, and this obviously is not speaking about um, a, a literal serpent. Okay, this is uh, pretty much speaking about the first vibration, first spirit, okay, of who we uh, uh, call Esau Edom today. Okay. Or, or the so-called the self-proclaimed white man, okay? So this is pretty much his punishment for doing what he did, okay? He's cursed above all cattle, and he is. Look at him, okay? <laughs> he, he, he's, he, nothing, nobody looks like Esau, okay? Well, I'll say this. Now, there are, are, are uh, they that be of the speckled bird, and they that are, um, you know, their lines got crossed up with Esau Edom so that, you know, certain instances there may, may be a person that looks like an Edomite, but he's actually an Israelite or a Moabite or any, uh, something else. OK. But for the most part, as a nation and, and singling them out, they're the, the most ostracized nation of people on the planet. OK. And one of the main reasons is because they're the only people that are not melanated. OK. Every other nation of people has melanin, you see, but through mixing, you know, uh, uh, just like Esau Edom did when he, because uh, 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 Isaac had told him not to mess with the heathen, especially the uh, Hamite women. Okay, and the first thing he did was go to the Hamite women. You see, and now speaking as a man, you know, but one could perceive that he was trying to change his, his skin tone. You know, well, if I have sex with a dark, dark skinned woman, okay, then maybe my son will come out dark again. Nah, and you see that today. Okay, most of the time. If not all the time, the child. Oh, no. Well, I, I will say that not all the time, because one instance where uh, a guy was standing up, listening to the elders out there in New York and just out of nowhere, Elder Apostle Tahar looked at him and the guy was darker than me. OK. Um, and had nappy hair, you know, and, and Elder Apostle Tahar asked me, say, hey, you know, basically what you doing up here, man? What's 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 what you, you got a question? And he was like, no. Nah. And then Elder Apostle Tahar said, well, what's your father? What's your lineage? Who, what's your father, uh, your nationality? And he said, oh, my, my dad's white. My mom is black, you know? And then Pastor Tahar went and said, see, I knew something wasn't right about your spirit, okay? But if you looked at that guy, he looked just like a Jake, okay? Look, you know, like John Shaft, like Elder Apostle Gabari likes to say, okay? But for the most part, nobody looks like those people, man. They're the most ostracized. They don't have melanin. They're awkward. They stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, they they have no salt, no conversation, just weirdos, man. Okay, and uh, 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 one of the one disease that plagues them that uh, is pretty much specific to Edomites is uh, internal human combustion, <laughs> where they just uh, catch on fire from the inside out, man. Okay, and the scriptures also say the people uh, uh, of my curse uh, uh, forever. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, the leprosy to, to be a clean leper is a curse, you see. Okay, but uh, back at 14, 
Genesis 3 and 14, it says, And Yahweh Bashmiah Shah said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the day of thy life. Okay, and on that belly refers to him being the lowest of the low. Okay, the scriptures refer to him as the basis of men. And he is. When you look on the uh, uh, table of nations, what nation are you going to put Esau Edom above? Okay, the only thing that they have against the whole nation is that the Heavenly Father has given them dominion. Okay, but when you do man to man, you see, and that's why the scriptures say, uh, uh, once the secrets are revealed, they're going to say what? Is this the man that causes the earth to tremble? This, this piece of shit? And when you look at them in society, these people have us in captivity? How the fuck? Okay, but the answer is the Heavenly Father has given them dominion. Okay, but when you look man to man, they don't measure up. To anybody you see and it says dust shalt thou eat where is it it says and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life confusion so the heavenly father said he's not the author of confusion well guess who is esau edom why because he's just the uh physical counterpart of the spiritual demon satan okay verse 15 and i will put enmity you know or or tension okay it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise, see, it shall bruise thy head, right? And thou shall bruise his heel, okay? And hey, the elder, uh, elder, uh, my main man, well, I'm forgetting his name, drawing a blank, Salakia. Um... Wow, that's that's crazy. <laughs> and I just mentioned his name, but you know, Satan got to step up in because I'm, I'm exposing him right now. But uh, Elder Yashawama Salakia, bro. <laughs> Especially if you watch this video, Salakia, bro, you know how it works. But uh, Elder Yashawama just did a beautiful lesson on this, okay? And showing that that woman, okay, uh, obviously is the nation of Israel, okay? Uh, because like he said, a woman came on there. Oh, see, the woman have seed too. Okay. But you can't possibly prove that. Period. Scientifically, no, no way possible. Okay. The reason you saying that, you're saying, she was saying that because she doesn't have the true understanding. Okay. It says, uh, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. Okay, and eventually that's what's gonna happen when Yahweh Shah returns. Okay, and, and, and bruising the head of that serpent is pretty much gonna take him out of power. Okay, just like it did uh, when uh, during the Dark Ages, because the scriptures say refer to it what as his deadly wound was healed. You see, but this time it ain't gonna be healed. Okay, we're gonna bruise his head, and he's gonna we're gonna take him out of power, and then at that time, okay, we'll we'll be in, in full righteousness. Okay. Well, we won't sin ever again, okay? And we're going to take him into captivity, like it says in Re uh, Revelations, the 13th chapter, 9 and 10, okay? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to go into captivity, okay? And then eventually, his uh, lineage is going to be raised out of, out, of, out of the world forever, okay? It says, um, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise the uh, his heel. And that's the point I wanted to go at because the, the, like the title of this lesson, healing in his wings, okay? So he bruised our heel, uh, basically our Achilles tendon, and we fail for a long time. Because if you get an Achilles tear, you know, uh, you ain't going to be able to walk, okay? You're going to be uh, 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 in a wheelchair or on crutches with a boot, okay? Meaning without those two aids, you won't be able to walk. Okay, and that's exactly what befell us as a people. Okay, and it's a byproduct of us being disobedient. You see, uh, let's get that. This is, uh, and I, I want to jump around in this. I want to read all of it. Okay, for the sake of time, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. You see, these were things that were promised would befall us if we didn't be obedient and we made a covenant or an agreement with the heavenly Father, which we broke. So guess what? The majority, the vast majority of the, the punishments that came upon us, okay, were, were things 
that made us sick. Okay, that diseased us. You know, whether it was physical or mental. So um, jump down to uh, Deuteronomy 28. In 15, it says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay. Now, obviously, we're familiar with these, but I want to. Um, I just want to read. Uh. And all of these are valid, you know, but just for the sake of being healed, like, you know, sicknesses, it says, um, verse 21, the Lord shall make, uh, the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Okay. Uh, uh, uh you know, crops being, uh, uh, plagued. Okay. With pestilence, you see, to where you can't grow and, and, and feed your family. It says, um. The Lord, uh, verse 22, Yahweh Shemiah Shah shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with the inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew. And they shall uh, pursue thee until thou perish. And guess what? The line of work that I do, you know, basically home improvement and maintenance. OK, a lot of the places I go into because we deal with our uh, low income housing. The majority of the places I go into are infested with mildew and mold, okay? But the people, hey, they're, they're managing, they're, they're surviving in it, okay? Lord knows their health status, but obviously it's doing damage, okay? It says, um, let's see. Like I say, all of this is valid, but, you know, for the sake of being healed, it says. Um, verse 26, and thy carcass shall be meat unto the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth. And uh, no man shall fray them away. OK, you see an example of that uh, uh, during, um, you know, slavery over here in the Americas. OK, where they leave uh, like that song, Strange Fruit. You leave a man hanging and the birds come peck it, eat his eyes out, you know, so on and so forth. Um, verse 27, Yahweh Shemel Shah shall smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds or hemorrhoids. Okay, and I've, I had a homeboy who had hemorrhoids, man. You do not want hemorrhoids. And I'm, I'm, I just witnessed him have it. Okay, and just for the sake of. The, the instance to show you how bad it was that's back when i was in the world and smoking blunts and he was hurting so bad that he couldn't even roll a blunt man <laughs> okay so you don't want hemorrhoids man it says and with the scab and and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed you see so uh in uh terminal diseases that that are unhealable you only just you know, with Big Pharma, they just give you medications that uh, keep you in the fight and, and run up a tab, you know, things of that nature. It says, um, uh, Yahweh Shemiah Shai will smite thee with madness, you see, plague of the mind, and blindness and astonishment of heart. Um, let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'll read one more because I know there's plenty more in the for the sake of time, let's see. Thirty-five. It says, "Yahweh by Shimei Shai shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot." Unto the top of thy head, okay, and one of those infirmities is a uh, uh, what is it? Arthritis. You see, that plagues our people at a high, high, high rate. Okay, 
So yeah, the, the the point is made, man. We need healing, man. Okay, not all of we not only are we mentally uh, sick, okay, we're physically sick, and even amongst the ones of us, okay, that are, hey, that the Lord saw fit to call into this ministry and has awakened us and given us that light, okay, even amongst us, like I mentioned about myself, man, dealing with infirmities, man, and, and, and praying fervently, you know, for the Lord to to keep me, man. Because serious infirmities, you see, that befall all, you know, a, a lot of brothers in this ministry, okay? And then we all can uh, agree that the bulk of our infirmity or our battle is fought within our heads, man, okay? Fighting evil thoughts and wicked vibrations, okay? And now we understand why it says, give me any plague but the plague of the heart, man, Okay? So, yeah, that's the point on that. But just proving, man, we we need healing, man. We need healing. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's get Isaiah. Yeah. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 28. And. Uh, let's see. It says, uh, let's see where I want to start. Um, we'll start at seven. This is uh, Isaiah 28 and seven. It says, but they also have air through wine and through strong drink okay and that's obviously speaking of uh philosophies okay different wines or different philosophies that uh that that you know are contradictory to the truth okay why because it's easier to do uh, uh wickedness okay okay you have to show a level of constraint um and discipline when you come to serve the Heavenly Father. And like the scriptures say, you have to prepare your mind for temptations. And we see that with a lot of guys who came into the ministry and fell away. Okay, they couldn't deal with it. You know, why? Because they weren't they weren't going back to our healing or our comfort here on earth. Okay, because we're not going to be fully healed here. Okay, but we do have medicine. We do have comfort. It's the scriptures. And when you don't attain to that, okay, then next thing you know, you find yourself uh, uh, calling yourself an Egyptologist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or or Muslim, you know, being a part of Islam, you know, because it's a, it's easy. You don't have to be a discipline. Here it is. These guys uh, 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 that, that follow or practice Islam, okay, Israelites specifically, we don't care about the heathens that practice it because that they don't have a power. That's for them, okay. But you Israelites, tis tis. You see. But uh, you see a guy and, and a lot of these uh, NBA players or football players, they'll be doing Ramadan, okay, where it's a fast where you don't eat or nothing, but you're still playing football or you're still playing in the game, okay? Showing you there's a lack of, of, of discipline when it comes to all these other uh, deities and, and religious groups, you see? But it says, um, verse 7, but they also have erred through wine and through strong drink uh, are out of the way. The priests and the prophet have air through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They air in vision. They stumble in judgment. You see verse eight for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. Verse 9, it says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay, and the scriptures tell us what? To desire the sincere milk. Okay, because if you don't, it's just like the synopsis of being a child. Okay, you have to bring that child up on milk. You know, but now uh, a new trend <laughs> Is bringing your child up on formula, okay? And that's just how asinine is that, you know? And I didn't know any better with my first child, 
Okay, but with my second one, we knew straight, straight titty milk, <laughs> for lack of better words, man. Okay, why? Because it's essential, not only for the child, but for the mother. Okay, it helps her heal up quicker. And then the child is receiving all the nourishment and, um, and minerals and elements that a formula can't give them. You see? So that's being con uh, uh, correlated to us walking in this faith. Okay, you got to desire that sincere milk. Okay, and have that foundation up under you, okay, until you're drawn from the breast. Verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, so giving you the format on how you teach this word. If you come up with a belief or understanding about something, you need four precepts to back it up. Okay, verse 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue, Will he speak to this people? Okay, speaking of the prophets. And when you look around, the only people that are doing that are the, 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 the uh, elders of, elder apostles of Great Millstone and the men under them on down. Okay, and the affiliates. Okay, and you got Bozo saying, oh, you're, you're talking rough and rude. Well, the apostle Paul spoke rude. Okay, yeah, I was shy, uh, called the uh, wicked Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, devils or vipers. Okay. That's name calling. You see, but you guys are effeminate and you're in your feelings. And when it comes to you, the scriptures don't matter because you're, you're, you're whoever you think you are, whatever. But anyway, verse 11 for with stammering lips and word stammering means uh, uh, mocking. Okay. And sometimes it's the, the, the faith calls for that. Okay. It says for with stammering lips and another tongue and that other tongue is English. OK, or Spanish or any tongue outside of Hebrew, you see. So for with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? Verse 12, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. OK, so here on this side, here in Babylon or any captivity that we're in at this time, the only rest or comfort we're going to get is from the scriptures. You see. And why do we need rest? Because we're weary, you see? And what are one of the best uh, healing agents, okay? That is not uh, feasible. I mean, not feasible, but that's not uh, uh, like, like a herb, you know, or a medicine created out of the earth. Rest, sleep, <laughs> okay? Mind at ease. And that's what the scripture does. It heals our minds, okay? It gives us rest. It gives us understanding. Let's us know what's happening. What has happened, what's happening, and what's going to happen. What can be better than that, man? Okay? People always say it's better to have a peace of mind, especially guy, people that are rich. They'll tell you that money money doesn't solve your problems. Okay? You just don't have a money problem anymore. And the scripture tell us what? Israel, Romans 11. Israel, what have Israel not obtained what it's seeking for? Yeah, the, 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 the elect have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. You see? Meaning, look, all of Israel are seeking for something. Now, there are different facets and different walks of life that if you're not of the elect or the Heavenly Father has predestinated you to come be, to be a part of this and be delivered, then you're going to find one of those avenues and it's going to lead you right off the cliff. Okay? But that's the point is, everybody is seeking. Why? Because they're sick. And only the scriptures is going to tell them that. Okay. And that's who the heavenly father is dealing with. Those that be of a humble, uh, a broken heart and of a contrite spirit. And why are we humble and, and, and broken hearted and contrite? Because we've woken up to who we are. We know who we are. We know what we've done. The offenses we've committed to the heavenly father. Okay. And understanding that we, on a, we were on a collision course with him and we were going to die to death if we didn't repent of our ways. You see? And knowing that day by day we still do shit that's off. That's that's that is is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. But guess what? That's who the heavenly father is coming back to, to, to deliver. You see? But 12 again, to whom he said, This is the rest where wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. You see? So the majority of our people, okay, that have refused this word, 
or just would not give ear to it, they're sick. Okay, and guess what? Ultimately, they, hey, the Heavenly Father is going to put them out of their misery. Since they don't want to come out of the, the, the good way, the righteous way, then he's going to do it the wicked way. Okay, but it's all in righteousness at the same time. Okay, why? Because the majority of our people are rabid like a dog. Verse 13, but the word of Yahweh Shem was, was unto them, uh, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So, hey, there's never any vain moment of teaching this word, okay? Either a person is going to be compelled to uh, 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 be, be a bridegroom or, or, or to be with the bridegroom, Salakia, okay? Or you're going to be compelled to go off into your own way and you're going to be destroyed, you see? Just showing you the, the, the beauty and the multifacetedness of our power, man, okay? But the key point again, sickness, weariness, okay? Tired, rest, okay? One of the best healing agents, rest, you see? Okay, we'll get one more and we'll close this thing out. Since it's the title of the lesson, got to bring it. This is Malachi chapter 4 and we start at the top. It says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, say if Yahweh by Shemiah Shav hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Okay, now, uh, uh, for truth's sake, it's specifically speaking about uh, Esau, Edom, okay, to where they'll leave him neither root nor branch because it's symbolic of a tree. So he's not going to grow up and, uh, 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 like the scriptures say, um, fill the cities, okay, uh, uh, fill the face of the earth with their cities again, okay, why? Because they're going to go into captivity under us uh, via uh, Yahweh, why Yahweh shy, you see? It's going to be their time to pay back retribution and be uh, slaves and have continual employment, okay? But also, our people have joined unto his ways, so they fit right in this, okay? All, it says all that do wickedly, okay? And the scriptures say, amongst my people are found what? Wicked men, you see? So just as much as we need healing, <laughs> we need to be delivered from this day because it's coming and it hasn't come yet, okay? It says, behold, the day uh, that comes shall burn it says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. You see? Okay, and we can thoroughly break that down and uh, line it up with scriptures and with current events to, to prove to you, okay, if it can be proven to you, because, hey, the scriptures say uh, all things are pure to the pure, but nothing is pure to the unpure, okay? So if you're pure, we can show you vividly that this means thermonuclear holocaust is coming to America, Okay? And if you're wicked, you got a nuke with your name on it. Okay, verse two. So just as much as we need to be healed from all the things that we've gone through as a nation, okay, we need to be made exempt from that day of judgment, okay? Verse two, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, and who is the son of righteousness? Our Lord Yahweh Shah. Okay, that's why I use this image here. You see? He's standing on the chariot, which we call the fathership, and looking at earth. Coming to do what? He's coming to do two things, okay? He's coming to judge all the wicked, okay? Set up his power structure here on earth, and then to deliver and heal those that be of the elect. You see? It says, um, verse 2, But unto you that fear my name, Shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. OK, and what stall? The stall of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Just like a cow or any other animal that's considered a calf is nursed and nourished and brought up. Well, guess what? We're going to uh, uh, be nourished and brought up the same way. But this time, OK, it's going to be in a twinkling, twinkling of an eye. OK. When our bodies are changed, Lord willing, we are the elect. When we're beamed up into those chariots, okay, given that, 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 that uh, this new flesh, okay, and, and removing that stony heart, you see? And we'll be healed from these chains of darkness, which our flesh is considered, man. 
Okay? So, yeah, more than anything, brothers, that's what we need to look forward to, being healed, man. Okay? Because we're not, we're not fully the men that we need to be, and we know that. Okay? But like the scriptures say, I'll read it again. It says, but unto you that fear my name, and that's a cut to those of you who say we don't know the name. Okay? Well, ain't no healing coming for you. Verse 2, it says, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Okay. So, yeah, that's it, brothers. Hey, let's just hey, patiently wait and constantly endure, man. Okay. Constantly endure. Okay. We're, we're, hey, we're closer uh, than we were yesterday. Okay. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we make it. We'll be closer than we were the day before. Okay. And that should be the mindset one day at a time and draw nigher unto the most high and he'll draw nigher unto us. Okay. So, uh, Lord willing, uh, that was edifying. I believe I hit the point. So with that, I say Shalom.